Kyle here from allmediareviews.blogspot.com. Uh, today, I was going to do something else, but today I, I just, I'm going to start going down some artists and, I don't know, this is going to be just sort of random this, at this point, what kinds of videos I'm going to be sharing, some non-music stuff, some non-collection, some concert stories, blah, 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 blah. So I chose, I was going to do my mid-season, but that's going to have to come next week, probably. Um, and then a collection video, which I made, but I'm not going to share because I'm waiting in the mail for some a few more things. So I'm going to talk about one of my favorite artists that I got in the last 20 years, Jellyfish, who, it's interesting how it's like everyone who discovers them gets into them, but it's like I've seen, I feel like an old fan even though I discover them late. A little bit like Kevin Gilbert. So, um, and I have... A lot of the standard stuff and then a few extras um, and I was going to show. Well, so that's what I should do. The name Jellyfish, I'm not certain, but I, I, I'm pretty, I'm, I want to say likely I first heard from Mike Portnoy from Dream Theater sometime in the late 90s probably or around 2000. I have a distinct memory of, I bought the, both the Jellyfish CDs, but I have a memory at Nearfest, I think it was in 2000, talking to a couple people about Jellyfish and the, the, the girl that we were talking to and this guy, the guy's like, oh, that's that band. It's, they're like kind of like the Beach Boys, but prog, sort of. But where I find my original Jellyfish CDs is in the old Case Logic. A lot of people don't remember these, but, you know, of course, I grew up in the CD, the compact disc era. I still have a lot of my CDs in here. I, don't, I haven't put them back in the cases, but... Um, I'm flipping through here and I kept them in here with some other stuff. I got my Galactic Cowboys and Atomic Opera, but you can see uh, right here both um, jelly, uh, Spilt Milk and um, Belly Button. Um, so those are the two CDs. I mean, I show the booklets, but um, yeah, and I, the thing is I definitely liked them and I bought them, I think, from Portnoy's and maybe one or two other recommendations, um, name dropping. But, I, you know, I didn't really, I can't say I, I, like, got into them right away. But then not that long before or after that, I was at that point in the year 2000, I was DJing at KFI Radio, and I got to interview some local bands, actually. One of them was this band I really like, and maybe I'll show their CDs at some point. You could do a whole local Minnesota thing. Um, they're a band called, they're originally known as Pavlov's Dog, which is not the band from the 70s that was Prague. But then they changed their name to Condition Response. I don't know if it's because of that, but anyway, I was interviewing Condition Response. Condition Response musically is a little bit like Queensryche, although they're also influenced by, like, Rat. <laughs> but, you know, and I think they, they were Dream Theater fans too. But anyway, they I was just asking them, among other things, about their music, like what their tastes were, what they've listened to, and they're like, oh, Jellyfish. I, I never can get sick of them. I've been listening to a lot of Jellyfish recently. So I think when I heard that, I used to listen to my radio shows, of course, after... When I'm at work and stuff, like, you know, I probably should spend more time with those Jellyfish CDs I bought, because I don't even know if I listened to both of them more than once or twice at that point. Um, and I was sleeping on them. That was the truth. I was sleeping on them. So then I did, you know, start listening to them and got more into them. And it was, yeah, it was like the Beach Boys or um, Queen, but sort of modern and doing sort of proggy kind of stuff. And um, so anyway, and then I just kind of grew to really adore them probably about three or four years later and there was more and more people talking about them there was a tribute cd and i just you know before i even got into kevin gilbert and toy matinee which i've come to sort of associate a little bit with jellyfish because jellyfish started out in the really in the early, late 80s uh, their, their debut album i probably can show so i'll show the vinyl and i have some cds to show which aren't besides those um so i have two copies i have the reissues and the uh, at least one original pressing. These I haven't even opened, which is sad. Maybe I need to open them. Um, so this is this is spilt milk and this is belly button. These are the reissues that came out. I don't know. It was like about it was like seven or eight years ago. It was after I met my wife. But I also found these, which it's weird. These are these are both belly button. I thought I had our first pressing. Oh, these are promos. You can see of of belly button. And, you know, the thing is, when I first got into them, I'll just show the record. I first got into, and it opens up like this. It's kind of a neat. I first got into, I definitely was one who preferred Belly Button to Spilt Milk. Spilt Milk got more, um, more of the popularity. Um, but I, you know, Spilt Milk, you know, I mean, uh, had didn't have Jason Faulkner. 
the lineup on Jellyfish, of course, was Roger Manning and Andy Sturmer, but then some, a few other people. But uh, Roger, Ro uh, Jason Faulkner was on the first album. Uh, Roger Manning's brother also, I can't remember his name now. Is it Eric? I can look at the credits here. But, um, yeah, these are promos. I think I found these, actually, at a store in Minneapolis that no, no longer around. Treehouse Records, of all places. Which is not a place I would shop that often, but... Um, anyway, I thought I also found a promo at one point of spilt milk, but I could be wrong. I mean, they were, you know, they were a little more popular at the time spilt milk came out than belly button, because spilt milk came out in 1993. So what I was getting at with, with, um, their history, they actually, you know, Roger and, and Andy, so a lot of people know, they had a band called Beatnik Beach, which I thought I bought that CD, but I, I don't know if I did. Um, not with Eric Dover or Jason Faulkner, but um, it's kind of Jellyfish-like. It's not as good to me as Jellyfish, but um, yeah, original, original. Anyway, um, well, maybe I'm going to go ahead and just rip these open then since I haven't. I mean, I, because keep in mind, when I was buying vinyl, I didn't, I didn't always, well, I may have to use the old scissors. I didn't always, you know, I was just buying this right away. And I remember Jellyfish was one of the ones I was interested in um, in trying to find because, I, you know, at the point that I started buying vinyl more regularly was when I met my wife in, in the early 2010s. But, you know, I wasn't making videos. I wasn't, uh, I didn't even have, like, large crates or anything like that for the vinyl. But let's see here. So... This is, this of course is, I mean, again, this is a reissue. I'm, I'll have to find it some other time whenever this room ever gets set up. And I can just ask, access it, you know, on a whim. I think Portnoy on his vinyl A to Z or whatever, uh, MP vinyl. Yeah, look at this. This is a green, translucent green almost. Um, but I've come to, you know, after some time over the years, I, I, I eventually came to conclude that Spilt Milk between the two albums was my favorite. Um, not by much. I mean, Spilt Milk has um, New Mistake, which is their, probably their greatest track and the most well-known song. It also has Sabrina Paste and Plato, which is incredibly catchy. And Joining the Fan Club, goes to number one. I mean, it's a classic record. People have, have grown to love this. It's become a cult, a huge cult following. Um, Let's just take a look at what the um, the belly button <laughs> uh, reissue looks like as well. If I can manage to get this open in a, in a reasonable amount of time, but I you know I was just kind of stressing with Toy Matinee, and they were from the Bay Area Jellyfish. So Kevin, while well, Toy Matinee was actually made in um, Southern California, like in L.A. or in, not in L.A. but in the southern part of California, of course, he spent a lot of time in the Bay Area, um, and so when Jellyfish was around, I, he, Kevin was a Jellyfish fan. So um, this is probably not that different than the one that the original, except the actual, the, the actual vinyl, but it's still the same design. I don't know why they didn't do this with spilt milk, but it's kind of cool the way they did that that fold out section. Um, if I can actually find. There's the, the lyrics, and this is blue, so the like green and blue, although I don't know why they didn't make Spilt Milk like pink or something. I don't know, the cover with the girl on Spilt Milk was always sort of a, I wasn't sure if I was going to like it, because I know they had the, the one, you know, on um, Sabrina Paste and Play-Doh with the whispering, I was like, is this kids music or something? But, but Belly Button has The King is Half Undressed, which was probably my first favorite song, um, that is why, you know, I want to stay home. She still loves me. All I want is everything. Calling Sarah, um, man I, the man I used to be. Yeah. You know, it's, they're both, you know. But I came to conclude this is a five-star record. This is four and a half. I mean, it's, it's splitting hairs to an extent. But um, but Jason wasn't on this. I think Roger's, Roger's brother may have been. I mean, the credits has that. I could just pull that out again. <sighs> the trouble with if you don't do the research before no I mean it, it, it's got the let's see here I'm looking at the lineup <laughs> Eric Dover and then 
You know, being the Jellyfish fan, I should know the lineup like the back of my hand. I don't. Baby's Coming Back is another one of the favorites on this this record, but Jimmy Necco, even Glutton of Symphony, Jimmy Necco of ours actually covered Glutton of Symphony live, although I've never found that. I know it, it was on the list of songs on the, the ours website, but Russian Hail, I mean, this, you know, they made two basically masterpiece records. So, um, so the other thing I have with the Jellyfish collection is a bunch of this stuff. Let's see here. So, Live at Bogarts, which I also have on vinyl, which I did open, I think. And I have the CD, which, if I'm not mistaken, this was from the belly button period, because I don't think any of the... Yeah, there aren't any um, tracks here from Spilt Milk. I mean, they did tour for Spilt Milk, but um, a lot of the live recordings from Jellyfish seem to be from, you know, pre-Spilt Milk. Uh, they did covers, of course, too, but there's the CD. I guess I'll, I'll pull out the vinyl. You'd see this a lot live at Bogart's. So here's this. And I feel really stupid, again, not knowing the members. You know, Andy's obviously the lead singer. Roger Manning plays, you know, keys, um, does also some lead vocals and, and background vocals. Um... You know, Roger Manning, they've all, like, not Andy so much, but um, Roger and Jason Faulkner have gone on to do um, a lot of other stuff. Loja. I've never read, read this. Oh, this is a really cool, I've really never looked at this. It's got the jellyfish, little, like, uh, symbol there, band logo, per se. I don't even know how many times I've even listened to Live at Bogarts. Probably two or three, four, maybe. I mean, I'm not someone who listens to live albums regu regularly. See, Chris Manning, that's who it is. So Chris, and, um, and of course, Andy plays drum. I forgot to mention that Andy's a singing drummer, but, and Jason Faulkner. See, this is, this is why this, this is the four-piece lineup, the uh, second disc. So, so the other pieces I have here, I do own the, this is the Jellyfish Comes Alive. CD, and I don't know if this was a single or this is like a radio interview. It's like it's a song called Jet. There's a, a fan box that I always wanted that people had. I, I didn't get. I know that people have sold it. They even covered Tom Sawyer from Rush, I think, on that. But um, this is again probably more yeah 91 G24 991 Hard Rock Cafe. So it's like a live EP, and then I have. This one, which is joining a fan club, um, I think this is a compilation, pretty sure. Pink. I guess you associate jellyfish with pink a lot of times. Yeah, it's very... They always had that sort of 60s psychedelia for their sort of... Um, Beatles, Beach Boys, you know... Um, I don't know, the kinks or uh, the animals or um, the zombies, you know, they, the monkeys even. They had very much of a aesthetic for being retro. But again, the production and sort of the instrumentation, sort of, it was like being retro but sounding like recorded, like the recording, you know, sonically sounds modern. Um, then there's this stack of, stack, stack of tracks which is a, like, again, I think it's like a compilation slash, well, <laughs> I kept on just buying everything I could from Jellyfish because you'd see them. I mean, they, they, as they're popular, I think that a lot of these companies were, were um, issuing more stuff packaged in USA and Mexico. Um, and I didn't pull out what I was meaning to pull out. Give me a minute here. Oh, no, that's what I was looking for. I do have the New, Ma New Mistake single, but it doesn't seem like I'm going to be uh, tracking it down today. No. But I do have this. This is an actual bootleg from from the, the Spilt Milk, 1996. Well, that was came on 96. It's called S Socrates, pa Pat, Pathos, and Plato. And, yeah, I'm not sure. Again, this is from the Spilt Milk, so it had to be sometime in 93 or 94. 
Yeah, and then there's then there's like interviews and stuff in here. But it was, it was when, the, you know, so it was just Chris and Roger Manning. I, I think Eric Dover may have been at least a touring member, but you can see the set list. It has Sabrina, that is why, new mistake, joined a fan club, I want to stay home, ghost at number one, the man I used to be, baby's coming back, the king is half undressed, all I want is everything, glutton of sympathy, and then the ghost at number one again, and new mistake, they close. I don't know if it was like a reprise or something, but... You know, and I've listened to this a few times, and it, it doesn't... It's a Belbo Productions present. Belbo Pop Production made in Taiwan, because it is a bootleg. Anyway, so on the last sort of piece, since I don't have my... Um, I can't find my original pressing of Spilt Milk. I don't know if I've got that. And I can't find my... Uh, I, I swear I have a new mistake CD single somewhere. Is the thing that Andy Sturmer did, Alpacas or Orgoline from Leo, Leo. And he only sings on one track, but... The thing that's noteworthy about this, besides the fact this is like the only thing, only like sort of music that Andy has recorded and released, this came out in 2006. And this is like an ELO tribute of sorts. And I forgot the song he sings on. Goodbye Innocence, maybe? I forget. But I came to learn a little later is that, among other people that was involved in this, Blue, B L E U, and Matt Mahaffey from Self. Um, but. I should be able to figure out what song he sings on, and I forget. That's how memorable it was. I mean, I was hoping he sang on more than one song. He only sang, like, on one or maybe two. Background Blue. Blue does a lot on this thing. Um, written by Blue. Vocals. Yeah. I don't know, because Andy Sturmer's basically done, like, like, television and kids' music and stuff like that. Anyway, I apologize for that. So, you know, that's my, the gist of my Jellyfish collection. Um, what's your favorite Jellyfish songs? You know, if I had to, I don't know if it's King of Hassan Dressed, or I'd go with, you know, it's tough. I, I, they're one of those bands that they have a number of really excellent, memorable, infectious tunes. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I always try to recommend people that know them, to Toy Matinee, or even Toy Matinee fans, if they don't know uh, um, jellyfish, vice versa. There's a group on Facebook that has to do with um, jellyfish, and a lot of people love Kevin Gilbert and Toy Matinee in there. But um, of course, the Roger Manning has done a bunch of things, and Jason Faulkner since. Jason Faulkner's released a bunch of solo albums. Roger Manning's released a few of them. I've seen some of them on vinyl, actually. Um, they had the Grays. I think that was Jason Faulkner's band. I should know this. I, Imperial Drag, I believe, was Roger Manning, and then he has that. Moog Cookbook, and now he has a new group that the last couple of years called the Licorice Quartet, which I have listened and liked. I probably should listen to more, but um, it's sort of it's three it's it's Roger, I think it's Jason, and it's Eric Dover, or, or it's Roger and Eric Dover and Chris. It's like three quarters of the Spilt Milk lineup. Um, of course, Jason wasn't in on Spilt Milk, but Jason Faulkner, but. Um, I don't know. I've I've really enjoyed like uh, tales of tales of not tales of um, his, the album from the ninety from the two thousands that Roger Manning released. Not Catnip Dynamite. I have that on CD, but the one before that, mystery something about pure imagination. It, it's almost lifted from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I forget the title. That one is pretty good. That's maybe the best Jellyfish release. That's not Jellyfish that's come out since that I've heard. But there's something magical about these two records that, that I have not heard from them. Licorice Quartet is the closest thing, though, I suppose, since. But, um, I don't know. I, the reunion, I assume it will never happen because, from all accounts, Roger Manning and, and, and um, Andy Sturmer aren't really on speaking terms much. And Andy, it doesn't seem like Andy wants to do a lot of music, so... Um, and it's not really bothered Roger, but it's just the fans like myself would love to see it, even just maybe like one show or, or one song. But, you know, you can't, you know, at the same time, these two records, their their catalog is basically flawless almost, so they'll never taint their legacy. I feel the same way about Apes and Androids. I don't know if that's ever going to happen again either. So, But anyway, give me your favorite Jellyfish songs. What's your experience with Jellyfish? What's your... Do anyone out there have the box set? And how much did you pay for it? That fan club box set that people had? It was like three or four CDs. You know, I know it had like a lot of unreleased stuff, live stuff, demos, a lot of stuff that, you know, and I think it's been shared online. Some of it might be even on YouTube or even on Spotify. 
But um, but thank you for watching. Uh, I got some more videos planned. We'll see you next time.